Hi, in this video, I'll be talking more about sequences and its properties. So, let's begin. We say that a sequence is eventually constant if there is a cutoff such that the terms x little n equals to x capital N for all n greater than capital N. So it just means that at the end, the tail terms of the sequence equals to the same number. And with that, it's quite clear that we have a convergent sequence already because we have already we have we'll be able to prove that if xn is eventually constant, then xn is convergent, which is quite clear because it will just converge to the tail end number. And so next definition is that a sequence is bounded if and only if there exists a real number such that all the terms are less than this real number. What is trying to say that a sequence is bounded if the set of x ends where m runs through n uh, natural numbers is bound a bounded subset of the real numbers or a general order field. And so one thing to note is that a convergent sequence is bounded and because we can just let the limit if it's a convergent sequence then the limit of xn equals to x so we just let epsilon equals to 1 then there will exist a cutoff such as this inequality holds and we apply the triangle inequality it means that all the xn's is less than 1 plus x and so we can just set the m to be the maximum of x1 all the way to x k plus k minus 1 and then we include the 1 plus mod x because we know that all the terms at the back is less than this and this will show that xn is less than or equals to m for all n in the natural numbers and because this m is a finite set we don't really need to take supremum you can just change it to the maximum function but it's actually honestly the same thing but it doesn't make use of the supremum property of the real number so actually this uh, will work for any ordered field sequence and what we also like to take note is that if an is a sequence of positive numbers then and the limit is zero then there will exist a constant such that xn minus x is less than or equals to c times an because you want this distance to go very small and then this is always bounding it so in the end the limit of xn will equal to x and your proof is quite simple so it's like a few lines two lines so you can just read it on your own Next, we want to prove some properties of convergent sequences. So this should be sequences. So a convergent sequence is one that has a limit. And actually, this limit behaves well with algebraic operations, such as addition, multiplying by a constant, multiplication, and division. And really, what we want to say is that suppose Sn and Tn are sequences and the limit of Sn is S and the limit of Tn is T. Then the limit of Sn plus Tn, so you get which that means the sequence now, let's say it's 1, 1, Sn is all the way 1 and Tn is all the way 2. What it means to add them is point wise. So it's 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2, so all of them will become trees. And what it's trying to say that the limit of this sequence now is just the limit of Sn plus the limit of Tn. And so the limit, this theorem actually says that the limit exists, so Sn plus Tn is convergent, and its limit is S plus T. And so we shall prove this addition operation, which is quite simple because we just, we just need to use the definition, so we just take an epsilon greater than 0, then there will exist a cutoff such that xn minus x is less than epsilon over 2. And there will exist a cutoff such that yn minus y is less than epsilon over 2. And so we just take the 
whichever is a bigger cut off so that for all the ends greater than this k xn plus y n minus x plus y you apply the triangle inequality you can break them up will be less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 which is epsilon and since epsilon is arbitrary this shows that the sequence converges to x plus y so i hope that's simple for b is also very straightforward so i'll leave it to you because now you just need to take xn as the constant sequence then you're done so we'll prove a more difficult one which is part c which is just multiplication and division you just need to read the proof in Schauber and Bertley and you'll probably understand it and if you don't you can drop it in the comments down below and I'll answer you so for C what we want to now figure out is a cut off such that the limit of this sequence xn times yn is x times y so we see the definition first. We just try to work backwards basically. So we have xn minus times yn minus xy being less than or equals to this term using the triangle inequality. Then we can pull out the xn and leave the y's on one side, pull out the y and leave the x on one side. So looking at this now we know that because there exists a real number such that xn is less than m1 for all natural numbers because xn is convergent so it's bounded we can take m to be the supremum or the maximum of m1 and this value y and because with that we can now change this xn to m and this y to m and then we get this term in the end and with that, we just need to choose the epsilon to be less to be epsilon over 2m so that when you multiply this part with epsilon over 2m times m, it will be epsilon over 2 the other side also will be epsilon over 2 and when you add them out, it will be epsilon so really real analysis is making use of the definition and really the hard part is coming up with this cut off but once you have the cut off then it will flow naturally and you reach the epsilon and you can see the last line is always the standard line where epsilon is arbitrary and so the sequence converges to xn and so this proves that the multiplied sequence is convergent and its limit is xy next we have the squeeze theorem and this is very very important because it will next help us in calculating limits so let's say you have a sequence that is bounded between two sequences and the limit of xn equals to the limit of zn then this proves that yn will also be convergent and its limit will also equal to xn which equals to zn and it's quite simple because you just need to take epsilon and because it's Z and Y, X and Y are convergent sequences. There are as if a cutoff such that XN minus W is less than epsilon and ZN minus W is also less than epsilon. And with that hypothesis, it shows that X minus W is less than or equals to Y minus W, which is less than or equals to ZN minus W. And then this part is larger than minus epsilon and this part is less than epsilon which means this xn yn minus w is bounded between epsilon and because of that it implies that the modulus of x of this is less than epsilon and since epsilon is arbitrary we have proven the theorem so the limit of yn equals to w and with that Squeeze theorem is very important because maybe you have a very complicated sequence here but you are able to bound it within two sequences that is easily able to compute the limits and the limits are the same then you know that the limit of yn will also be w so i hope to this point is quite clear and next we'll be talk about monotone sequences and really 
monotone sequences is just an e- a sequence that is increasing always. And so it's monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. And we say a sequence is monotone if it's either increasing or decreasing. So you can just take examples to understand better. But it should be quite clear from the definition what are monotone sequences. And a big theorem will be that if Sn is monotonic, but this sequence must be in real numbers, then we can say that Sn is converges if and only if it's bounded. So we have already proven that if Sn converges, then it's bounded. So what we really want is the converse part. And the converse part really makes use of the least upper bound property of the real numbers, which is why it has to be in the real numbers for this to occur. So for example, you have Sn being less than or equals to Sn plus 1, so it's monotonically increasing. Then we let E be the range of this sequence. Because the sequence is bounded, there will exist a least upper bound in of E by the property of completeness in the real numbers. And so Sn is less than or equal to S for all N. And so for every epsilon, there will exist a cutoff such that S minus epsilon, there will be some terms in the sequence. And so as Sn increases, it implies that Sn will converge to S. And so this proves that if Sn is bounded in the real numbers, then Sn converges and it converges to the supremum of the range of Sn's. So I hope it's clear and the proof is actually quite straightforward, but you just need to take note that you're using the fact that you are able to find a least upper bound for E. That's all for this video. And in the next video, we'll be talking about subsequences and continuing our study of sequences. Catch you in the next one and feel free to like, share and subscribe. See you.